What's up everyone and you are watching Crypto Grinders and today in this episode I'm going to be talking about the difference between Hopi Prime versus Binance's Launchpad. From what I understand and what people have been been uh, perceiving this space to be an IEO, actually it's not an IEO. Wow, uh, it is completely different. Uh, these folks are not raising money with the, the these folks are not actually raising money through the 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 platforms okay just let me correct that i just wanted to get that off the bat first and it's actually a, a extension okay and both are doing the same thing they have really raised funds okay let's 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 put a few assumptions uh, uh here okay let's say if we talk about uh, BitTorrent tokens. BitTorrent tokens already raised funds during the 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 buy up, the private sale already. And right now, if there's an, uh, if there's going to be a creation of tokens, right, it's an additional bonus for those who are equity holders. Okay, let's just be very very straight up about this. Okay, because Justin Sun actually bought BTT for hundred and forty to hundred and fifty million dollars. Okay, that was the valuation that was provided. That was based on the private sale. Now, what he did was he released and relaunched and reinvigorated and raised more money through the token sale. Now, this token sale is a little bit fishy because it's a double earn to me. And when you open this up, this portion is zero equity, okay? Zero equity, you are just a token holder and obviously you are in it because of certain speculative uh, benefits, nothing more. Obviously, if it, it has enough liquidity for you to go up, you would definitely be trading it as a trader. But if you're someone who is speculating, you were in it so that you can dump it later. Let's be just be very honest. Now, will there be any long term possible implementations or possible ways to actually earn revenue from uh, BTT's eventual business model that was incorporated into the Tron ecosystem? Honestly, I do not know. Now, everything is all based on proof of concept because at the time, BitTorrent was a non-revenue generating business, okay? It was meant to pirate, uh, pirate software back and forth, okay? So it was very difficult for anyone to actually say that they would want to claim any kind of revenue. It was just really just a, a, a system that was built so that people can share files freely and um, as the network grew, you were able to download the files more efficiently naturally sharing these are all actually nodes okay this was like so-called the p2p file sharing blockchain of the time now when when this happened right what hap what 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 justin and binance did was very very smart hey let's try to reinvigorate the market by creating uh, uh, enough hype and let's start our own catalyst instead of it being on uh, ethereum in the past exchanges now will take the lead and launch the, the token sales, okay? When they say launch the token sales, right? Fundraising is fundraising, but if the project has already raised enough money and of course via Justin Sun's very big war chest, they don't really need to raise any more money. What happens is that they're creating this additional pocket of value for themselves. So be, be very mindful when you're going into this game that there's more than meets the eye, okay? So if equity was if equity and private funding was already catered and and really uh, taken care of, these additional token issues right are completely bonus money. Think of it this way, right? It's bonus money, guys. So you have to recognize that and understand that. Okay. So the next thing is how will uh, any how will any future token holders actually benefit from holding the tokens anyway? That's where you have all your distributions, uh, your 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 airdropping, where where no one actually does airdrops anymore. It's usually considered distributions, right? Token distributions, and there has to be obviously a maintenance of value. There has to be a demand for the tokens. There has to be a strong ecosystem and use case behind it. Right? So all these things have to come together, or else no one will hold the tokens. Then from there, what is the, the buyback? Uh, uh, and if, if there's going to be a buyback scheme and a token burn, how will that function? What are the 
events that will lead up to that buyback and what will constitute to actually reducing the supply, the circulating supply. Because whenever people mint tokens or any company mints tokens, right, it's always a fixed supply. There will be no increase. There will only be a, 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 a there will only be a, a circulating supply that will be going forward. Oh, yeah, sorry, there will only be a circulating supply that will increase or de decrease, right? When you increase the circulating supply, you're basically releasing more tokens into the market. That's all. But if you want to reduce the existing circulating supply because you notice that hmm, maybe my demand isn't so good and you notice that your token holders are actually pretty upset, you want to actually do certain buybacks. But the buybacks have to be justified by something, right? So for example, if there is a company that is making money, it is revenue generating, obviously you want to reward your token holders because unfortunately you can't really reward them directly because equity holders on the other hand are able to earn from the profits of the company or the growth of the company as the valuation potentially goes up so let's not confuse everyone okay i only want to talk about the token holders today i don't care about the private equity holders because private equity holders is a whole whole other episode that i've covered many many times before and since a lot of people cannot get into private equity i'll just only talk about the token holders so for token holders it's pretty straightforward you are one of the folks that are at the bottom of the food chain unfortunately and then you do not have access to any kind of voting rights other than a voting right on the ecosystem so this is the reality, okay? I, I, I think a lot of people want to hear the nice stuff, but I'd rather tell you the truth. Senior debt, preferred stockholders, okay? Preferred stockholders, convertible bonds also f uh, are there. Comes common equity, come token holders. This is the system, okay? So just bear in mind that token holders never ever have any equity in the company. You are really purely basing on the eventual integrity and hopefully that the companies that are issuing the tokens will honor token holders. That is the risk that you have to take. Okay, so right now, let's get into it. So if you are someone who is already holding the tokens, you notice that there are ways to earn. Firstly, holding the tokens naturally would get you either a, a, a distribution of the tokens. And uh, we're now talking about exchange tokens here. So, so now you're gonna have, let's say you hold a particular token and there's a new launch. In the past, okay, the very first phase was, okay, new listing um, to encourage a little bit of excitement and awareness of this, new, of this new listing. Anyone who is holding a particular exchange token will get uh, a certain amount of this uh, new token listing, okay? So you can get a measly amount from anywhere from one to $10, okay? And then it will be spread across uh, the X number of people who are holding this particular exchange token and it can range from, from uh, just holding it on one day to a, a, a period of time, say 30 days or more. All right, so the longer you hold, the more the, the distribution will happen. So if you're, you're kind of wondering why exchange tokens have been so popular, this is one of the reasons. Okay, so the next reason is exchange tokens also could potentially give you revenue sharing. So what happens is that when all these, because naturally when you are trading on the platform, okay, you are actually generating a lot of fees, okay, for the company, right? And when the company does very, very well, they have, they, they, they would like to share that revenue. So it can be 20% or 10, 15%, whatever. It really depends on what exchange uh, you are using. So let's just assume that it's 20%. So 20% of that revenue will be used to buy back the tokens from the market. And then from then, whatever happens to that tokens, right? It's either cashed out, um, burnt away. That is based on whatever the exchange uh, uh, wants to declare. Okay, now the system kind of has changed of late. I think the, 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 the of late, the, the, the exchanges are now looking at long term. Okay, they're looking at long term. That's when they started coming up with the uh, Launchpad, Huopi Prime, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I'm going to compare the, the two since, since Huopi Prime is going to be uh, launching tomorrow and then Binance Launchpad already took off. What are the differences and how both will work? So right now, Binance Launchpad uh, is going to have a certain requirement. So Binance Launchpad started first and right now they're going to have a lottery system. So this lottery system, okay, let me just share with you. Okay, uh, so the lottery system, okay, is going to be uh, for 20 days, you're going to have, uh, if let's say, for example, if you hold um, less than 200, but 
uh, slightly, you see, that's the thing about this this chart. It's a bit weird. Um, it says less than. I think maybe the arrow is a little bit wrong. It should be hundred, uh, equal to hundred or more within, uh, but less than two hundred, you get one lottery ticket. So two hundred, uh, two hundred. Uh, 200 to 300 or but less than 300 you get two lottery tickets so on and so on and so forth okay and this will be for 20 day period see smart because at, to me I, how I'm looking at it is that Binance knows that people always want to dump so they will give people a 10 day period to do their dumping of the, the Binance tokens and then from then uh, 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 eventually people will pick it up based on the fact that it depends on the type of particular uh, uh listing on launchpad right it depends it really all depends on on what is the listing you you can't be participating in every single one so from there and why this change from a fastest finger first to a lottery system i suspect that it really jammed the whole site and when it jammed the whole site right you're causing uh, people who actually don't give a shit about the latest listing they only want to trade and if they only want to trade and they can't do that it's a loss of revenue. So by having this lottery system, everything is a little bit more organized and you are, I mean, they are able to manage the traffic a little bit better because from there, if you look at the example here, let's let's assume it. Okay, let's assume, you, you, you see, let's say if each ticket entitles you to put in only about 500 US dollars worth, okay, and then from then, everything will be already done uh, uh, prior to that because the moment you have five winning tickets there will be a probably a, a, a lock a lock of the amount that you plan to commit okay so let's say you you are given five tickets they will lock up probably 2500 of your binance tokens from there to us dollars worth by the way not 2500 binance tokens so 2500 us dollars worth of binance tokens and then from then once uh, it goes through right once it goes through perhaps maybe only two two of your tickets went through because it's going to be a lottery system. So that means they're going to take a thousand dollars and then it will allow you to buy a thousand dollars worth of that new listing. From everything is done in a very systematic systematic manner as opposed to fastest finger first, everyone gets jammed. Uh, people are, thick, are crying foul, you know, uh, uh, that internally there's uh, people who have this, this uh, has additional advantage or unfair advantage or uh, people claiming that they are buying, uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, sorry uh, valid, validated, uh, already uh, verified accounts uh, from the black market or whatever. So all these things and scripting and whatever. So to a certain extent, Binance is making an effort to kind of sh uh, sh tone this down, right? So, and also it will, it will help out in terms of facilitation. So 20 days before the lottery, Binance now starts recording BNB balances to determine the amount of lottery tickets that can be claimed. So it's very straightforward. This will continue for 20 days. So, so this is like the, the cycle, right? What will happen is that there will be this, this onslaught of people who are interested, who want to buy. And the whole idea is if the prices of that particular listing do very well, each project will have a certain amount of success. So, the hard, so right now, right when you when you buy into the very first few projects, right, usually, don't quote me on this, don't quote me on this, but usually it would be good because you don't want to have a shitty, not successful listing, right? Because the moment this these few don't make anyone money, right? And and honestly, no one really cares whether or not it's really solid or not. Because whether they care it's solid or not, it's always on the bigger playing field. People who are coming in at five hundred to one thousand five hundred dollars, honestly, they're not gonna stay long enough in a particular project. They imagine the questions that were were coming out when I was doing the Huopi Prime interview. Hi, I want to buy top. Can top buy whole or sell on the mainnet launch? Tell me now. Sorry, sir, but that is a very, very black question and no one was going to answer you. But this is the reality of it, right? So what's going to happen is that a majority of the folks, right, who are in it for the long run, they are in it on the private equity side. Now, those who are coming in are clearly going to speculate. What's going to happen is that how this thing will shift, okay, how this thing will shift right now, right, is eventually when the project really starts to show some strength. So yes, you may benefit from getting in early on any kind of launchpad or prime listing. And if you are dedicated enough, right, you you try to get in on the first few rounds. So prime, on the other hand, has a little bit of a different guideline. Prime, okay, prime will have three rounds where you will have the ability 
Okay, and this is for now, there's no 30 days. Okay, there's zero 30 days. So this helps out with token value management and this keeps the Hopi price, right? Actually rather sustained because there's no such thing as, okay, uh, uh, only when you want to buy, then you come in. They're going to see the 30 days. So of course, yeah, naturally, because if let's say the next project doesn't appeal to you, you obviously will dump the Hopi tokens. But if the project does appeal to you, it is a 30 days time frame. So it creates another level of, of support. Same thing as the Hopi, uh, sorry, same thing as the Binance tokens. Binance tokens are, is doing exactly the same thing. But in this case, this is 20 days. But the reason why Binance put it at 20 days, because Binance knows that its price is not as attractive as Hopi. It is $17.25. Okay. So people are thinking, no, 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 don't worry, man. Don't worry. I'm only getting into the I'm only getting into the uh, 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 listing anyway. I don't care about whatever price is Hopi because uh, uh, whatever price is Binance because even if it's Bi Binance is thirty dollars, right? I'm only going to be contributing five hundred dollars worth. But you know what's the issue? If there is a cash out happening anywhere, okay, anywhere along the line, either I'm a Binance holder deciding to take take the opportunity to dump my Binance tokens because of this situation. It can happen to Hopi, by the way. Just to be very fair. So while everyone is now excited about the potential gains that people will get from a, a listing like this, they never consider for the fact that there are holders who are in it for with the exchange. That means they're holding exchange tokens only. So you have to be very mindful of this, that you have a few angles that you have to play. There's no, no uh, win all be all. It's going to be like Ethereum in a way, right? Because when Ethereum was at a high, Okay, at a thousand dollars, people were still rushing into ICOs. Okay, no one gave a shit whether Ethereum was one thousand dollars, and it was clearly overvalued. And even it, even Vitalik kind of came out to that. To me, I see for the fact that Binance is clearly overvalued. They were overvalued a long time ago, but obviously a lot of people still love Binance because of the accessibility, the openness, the 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 social media attention that it's getting. The more marketing, the more shilling, the better. But on the other hand something that Huopi has that no one actually understood was they really have the strong buildup of revenue that has been around for almost six years. You see, so their war chest is nice and thick and heavy. And if you look at the circulating supply, so let's look at that now. So if you look at the circulating supply of Huopi, right? Their circulating supply, although the total supply is definitely more than Binance tokens, right? But they are only valued at 125 million, okay? Only lately, okay, only lately they are valued at 125 million. Whereas if you look at Huopi, they are worth 2.447 billion, okay? And if they're worth 2.447 billion in terms of overall market cap, okay, and their circulating supply is 141, circulating supply. But right now, if you look at Huopi's circulating supply, it's only 50 million, okay? That's three times lesser. And look at the price. So it's only about the type of markets that are available for attack. Okay, now we're not now we're not talking about who's gonna win or whatever. We're talking about markets of attack. Right now, imagine if Hopi was able to open up, say, the U.S. market, the Russian market, the Indian market. Who would who would actually pick which one? Let's just be very straightforward. Do you think seventeen dollars jump to a hundred dollars is easy? Or you think two two dollars and uh, two dollars and fifty cents jumping to five dollars is, or two dollars and fifty cents jumping to ten dollars is a bit easier. From a price point, it's very easy and very straightforward that people will just pick the the one that has the cheaper price because it's about supply and demand. Okay, it's about supply and demand. It's about price and quantity. If I know for a fact that there is less quantity out there in the circulating market, I want to buy more of it and as much of it as I can. It is very, very straightforward. At the same time also, what is the likelihood of the price dropping very drastically? Do you think that, let's say for example, once fundamentals catch up, do you think that it's easy for Binance to drop back to $10 or even lower? It's very, very easy, right? So it's now based on whatever that is happening on the market right now. So so how do I create demand? In the past, there was no demand, right? I need to create dem the demand. Hence, you have Launchpad, hence you have Prime. It is very, very straightforward. There has to be some form of catalyst. There has to be some form of excitement going on. And with this, for this fact, for this fact alone, for this fact alone, I know for a fact the money is going to be in Hopi, Hopi Prime. There's only so much that Binance can push because now that you're going to have a lock-in on both sides, okay, and people don't have as much liquidity to lock in, this is a guarantee. 
when people are anticipating a launch, they want to quickly release their funds as quickly as possible. Now that you implement lock-in as well, you're now going to have this headache where you need to sustain your price at $17. Any small little drop that is $5 or more, you're going to cause people to panic. So a lot of folks, even if you look at the communication that uh, that CZ has put out, right, you you have to put in money that you are able to lose, okay? Even he has to comment stuff like that. And yes, both platforms are just an extension of it. So my my objective is just to help you see how this game is going to be played and how you would like to play it. Do you want to play it on the uh, the, the the listings or you want to play and benefit on the on the exchange token? So there's two ways that you are looking at it. So personally, where I'm going to go and where I'm going to attack is very simple. I'm going to attack the exchange tokens. So straight up, I'm going to share this with you. So why am I attacking the exchange tokens really hard? I know that there's going to be high volume. So if you look at the 24-hour volume for Huopi and you look at the 24-hour volume for, oops, uh, let me go back to the marketplace. Hey, shucks, man, where's the Binance? Okay, anyway, never mind. So 24-hour volume obviously is across multiple exchanges. Let me just quickly go into it. So Binance's 24-hour volume on just Binance alone on Tether, right, is 90 million. Now, for... Uh, Hopi is 50, around 50, 50, 52 million, okay? So both are very comparable, both are very healthy. Why would I want to put my money into a new project that I completely won't know whether it's revenue generating and I have very little knowledge about? So that's not me, but it may be you. Maybe it's something for you, but this is non-financial advice. That is just your personal choice. I am not going to be involved in that. For me, I'm going to take the strategy of working on the exchange tokens because I've always believed that the exchange tokens have the strongest ability to create enough hype or have the ability to create enough catalyst and attract the market because everyone is using an exchange. If you don't buy, if you are not involved in this space, how are you going to buy your tokens? Just be very upfront with me. How are you going to buy your tokens? Do you think you're going to buy it on Gemini and just sit in front and wait for Gemini? To, for something to happen, look at the price of BTC, okay? Just look at the price of BTC. As of now, if you look at um, the price of BTC, the price movement every 24 hours is anywhere from 1% to 3%. Whereas if you look at anything else, anything else is 5% or more. Especially if you look at US dollar tether pairings or BTC pairings, whichever is your flavor, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The, the most important thing is that there is volatility and there is eyeballs happening and coming into the altcoin space. So that is why the exchanges kind of took it upon themselves. You know what? We're not going to wait for any other uh, stuff happening of whatever institutional or in approval or whatever. We'll just make it happen with the markets that are the most receptive to our business model. Simple as that. Don't need to think too far ahead. This is what's happening. So to me... Exchanges already are generating revenue. Depending on how they do it, whether is it via their OTC uh, market, whether is it via uh, actual trading from retail or institution, whether there is a derivative market, whether there is from their index fund, doesn't matter. All these things are money making. Even services, which is what the exchanges are providing from a technical to advisory standpoint, where they're collecting consultation fees to even listing fees, may or may not depends, right? Because every single, uh, every single, uh, every single platform has its own unique feature. So if you look at even at uh, OKX, for example, right? Uh, OKX has yet to really start its very strong marketing, but I noticed that it kind of has pretty much a similar model to a mixture of Poloniex, where Poloniex at the time uh, was allowing people to actually lend. So there's a lending wallet where you can put in and uh, so-called lend your coins to people who want to borrow. And who are these people? These people are the speculators of the margin trades, right? So if you are someone who just wants to play the broker, right, and you are not interested in whatever happens to the market, you can just do lending. So based on the demand, if there's a strong demand for BTC, your interest rate for BTC will go up. You can check that out in OKX's business model. It's very straightforward. So interest will go up for, depending on the, the volume of how much people are uh, interested to lend for particular altcoins or uh, BTC trading, right? But since BTC volatility is so low at the moment, a lot of people are speculating on altcoins because 
the leverage, uh, sorry, the volatility is better and the leverage uh, is decently attractive depending on which uh, platform you use. So those who are already on BitMEX are kind of already understand what this is all about. So anyway, anyway, for me, I'm going to take the simple road. I'm someone who looks at things from a long-term perspective. I'm not someone who likes to trade in and out of stuff. To me, the exchange tokens are the best value as of now. Now, which one is of the best value? So let me go into the... Let me go into the my little chart here that I've already drawn. Uh, shit, where's my pen? Okay, so anyway, uh, this is a very simple, okay, wait, shit, it's not loading. So this is a very simple uh, supply and demand curve, right? And uh, right now, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going from the fact that this is the quantity and this is the price. So let's assume at the time, right, when Binance was having uh, $12 in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of price. At the time, there was there was maybe an X amount of demand. But as the price goes up, right, the demand tends to go down. Why is that so? Because always there's an inverse, inverse correlation between price and quantity, right? The more expensive something is, you tend to sell it off. It's very normal. Think about it, especially if you're a trader. You know when the price goes up, you want to take profit, right? You're already letting go of your position. So as an investor, you have a different route you want to see whether there is growth. So remember when I showed you that uh, Huopi is now, uh, sorry, Binance is now worth 2.44 billion based on its circulating supply. Can it actually keep up with more injection of money, right? Because when you have so much money, you have to, you have to know exactly what to do with it. Are you, uh, e okay, and right now, right, the beauty of it uh, is that there's no declaration of when there is a dump from behind. You do not know that. Okay, whenever a high level executive in the stock market needs to dump their tokens, right, they have to put up a declaration with the SEC and with the exchange that they're going to declare, I'm going to sell off this amount of my shares. That's a direct declaration. So they're not going to be able to dump on the market unless they go through third parties. Okay, but right now, exchanges, projects don't have to declare whether they want to, when they decide to dump. So you don't have to. You you don't. You have you you have very little um, information or pri uh, public information when it happens. You're only gonna see a large candle sell down, and that's all you're gonna experience. So it's based on your in-depth knowledge of what you are putting your money into. Now you must be thinking, wow, Ryan, your your conversation or your episode becomes very confusing. Am I a trader or am I an investor? Unfortunately, my friends, you have to be both. If you decide to stay and become lazy as only an investor, and you know what's the worst thing? People have the imp impression that as an investor in the crypto space or in traditional markets, you're just putting your money in and you're hoping for the best. Okay, it doesn't work that way. In, in crypto, okay, especially if you are talking about a crypto investor, you have to be able to act and think also on a trading perspective. That means when there is volatility for you to sell, you have to sell. Okay, it is pretty unique. Okay, when because right now the the there's not enough volume in a particular trading crypto, but the moment when there's enough volume because there's so much eyeballs, right? Potentially, whatever that you put in previously that you could not cash out, you usually can start cashing out. You must think of it from that point of view. The other alternative is that you are focused on a focus investing method, which I've also covered before in a previous episode, that you don't care about the, the short term. That means the short term is anywhere from one to two years. You are allowing, for example, like Binance, that has grown to 2.44 billion and has millions of, a lot of volume on a 24 hour basis that you don't even have to worry. If you had, if you had uh, uh, 10,000 Binance tokens, 20,000 Binance tokens, you can get out because there is enough volume to support it, okay? That is one potential as well. So my question is not about what, my, my opinion, right, of whether Binance can sustain or cannot sustain has yet to be determined. I cannot say that it cannot sustain, neither can I say that it can sustain because right now it's too early. It only recently started ramping up activity. And we have to ask ourselves, how big is the market right now? How big is the market? These are the factors that we have to consider because if the market cap is 140 billion, Binance is already 2.44 billion. What is the likelihood of it being a $10 billion company? It's, it, it, and it and depends on what kind of time frame. We have to ask ourselves all these questions because without understanding all, all these things and these factors, if we know for a fact right that 1% of the people 
are interested in crypto, the whole world's population, 1%. What is the likelihood of all that money really flowing in? Is this money even organic? Or is this money actually coming from somewhere else? We do not know. We really do not know. It is not as transparent. Same thing goes for Hopi. If Hopi's price starts to escalate too quickly, everybody will start taking profit out of Hopi tokens as well. It is the same. It is the same. Both are running at the same pace. But I'm talking about which one is more uh, functional and which one is more valuable for now. Okay, so let's, let's just look at it. So if you were to look at the the chart here that I've written. So this is the price. So 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. This is the amount of quantity that people potentially can own. So if let's say, for example, right, if you are someone who is um, uh, in your 20, 20s, 20s to your 30s, right? How many, honestly, how many Binance tokens can you really own, right? Let's just be very realistic. And you're willing to lock up for every single uh, uh, particular uh, ICO or I IEO, for example, okay? Let's just call it IEO for now, okay? We, 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 we call it Launchpad, we call it Prime, whatever, but let's just talk it as a as an IEO. But bear in mind, IEOs are not fundraising efforts. It's very different from an ICO. It is an extension, okay? So just repeat that again. So right now, if let's say you look at the token supply, okay, let's say right now, right, okay, hundred. if you own 100 tokens and it's at $12, that's already $1,200. Imagine at... $20 or which is very close right now because uh, uh, Binance is now at $17, right? This is where it's at right now, okay? And you own 100, it's 1,007. So that means, right, it's a $500 more commitment for you, okay? So if it's for me and it's a fixed price, right? If let's say the, if, let's say the amount doesn't change, that means the price of the, the token doesn't matter. They already said that the price of the token would not matter because the contribution will change based on project to project and based on the demand. So they really know already for a fact that if it goes up too astronomically, no one gives a shit. No one wants to even care about it. To me, if let's say the seller tokens or the, or the top tokens or whatever tokens, okay, we have to see. We really wouldn't know because seller is not listed yet. Okay, seller is not listed yet. Neither is uh, 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 what you call a top. Right? We will only know after more data. So maybe I'll do a review one or two weeks later. After these listing, then we can have a straight up comparison. But right now we're talking about making money. Okay. So exchange tokens, on the other hand, are now fighting for position and, and, and eyeballs. Okay. So you have one one side you have the uh, Hopi tokens and one side you have the Binance tokens. ROI wise, ROI wise, okay. Binance takes the lead for now. Okay, because Binance has more markets. Okay, so as I say. So why is the, the demand still very fierce? Okay, why is the demand still very fierce for Binance? More markets. Simple as that, okay? More users. Ooh, shucks. Okay, I'm gonna write all over the place. More users, okay? Great social. Okay, so the ROI is there. But what happens is that people don't realize that they're buying into the hype already. No one cares about how much actual revenue they are generating. Now, naturally, when all these things happen from more markets, more users, great social, okay, and if they create enough excitement for top, for uh, sorry, for a uh, seller, for example, okay, there's great demand, and if seller does very very well, so there has to be a few plays. So, seller, okay, although seller is, by the way, Seller has four co-founders. None of them have run a company before, okay? They have five full-stack developers or main, develop main developers, or is it six main developers? The question right now is that it's unproven and mainnet is going to, only going to come out in quarter, uh, second half of 2019. So there's zero mainnet. Right now, everything is speculation. So if the price starts to pop, naturally no one will give a shit about the fundamentals because at the end of the day, since, the, since I made money, I'm very happy, I'm going to use the profits and push my money to the next round of whatever is new. This is the beauty of this whole space and will only continue to be like that. And hence, that's why big boys and big money will usually never come in because they are not in charge of all these, all these kind of uh, uh, movements, right? So right now, it's an organic market in that sense where only people who are even watching this stream will even bother, who even, even understand what I'm talking about because you have a certain level of experience or maybe if you don't have any experience, naturally you want to kind of catch up by watching a uh, majority of my, my videos and at least you get a little bit of uh, uh, insights. So this is what's happening, okay? This is the truth. 
All right, right now, it's just more of how are, how are they going to sustain this demand? So realistically, you cannot because after a while, right, it's going to be very costly. So unless the, the, the projects know how to sustain the cost, they have to maintain their own tokens, right? They have to maintain a value because you're not going to be shield like nobody's business on a particular exchange. That means they have a very high uh, a, a standard that they have to stand up to because the exchanges are going to say, this particular project is what we believe in. We have vetted, we have qualified, we feel that they are going to do very well, but it is non-investment advice, okay? That's the disclaimer for both sides because they are not going to be responsible if it doesn't do well on the existing market, right? It could, it could always flop. It could always flop. So take note that there is a risk involved. To me, I'm not going to go so much into the, the new launches. I'm going to go into the tokens. I'm going to go into the exchange tokens because I know that's where the consistent demand and volume will always be. The moment that there's a new uh, IEO, there are going to be people uh, storming into it People have to buy either the HT tokens or the Binance tokens. It's a given. So it's automatically, there'll be some kind of level of automatic demand, okay? Not only that, because there's going to be a sustainable sustainable price, I'm going to use it and take, to, take it to the advantage and I'm going to take advantage of that and I'm going to make money from that. Simple as that. I'm not going to care so much about the IEO because that's only a thousand five to maybe, uh, yeah, thousand five or maybe two thousand dollars. That is not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to look for that kind of long-term value. And if I have to trade, I'll be trading those. So anyway, that is all for the episode. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this episode. I hope I gave you a little bit of insights and a little bit of tips and tricks to capitalize on this whole, all, this whole Hopi Prime and this whole, this whole uh, uh, Binance token thing, right? At the end of the day, both are great companies, okay? Both are solid companies, but definitely one is more overvalued than the other. And, you know, maybe both are overvalued. I don't really know. But I think at the end of the day, once once more and more financial statements are, are becoming more transparent and as they start to, to kind of be a bit more transparent to the community, all these things will be easier to evaluate. Okay, guys. So anyway, that is all for the episode. Give this a thumbs up if you felt it was useful. If you, if you felt it wasn't useful, give it a thumbs down. And of course, I always read your comments. Comment below which tokens are you going to be interested in. Are you going to be interested in the listing tokens? Are you going to be interested in the exchange tokens? Which one is it? And of course, give this a subscribe. It will really help the channel. And last but not least, turn on the notification bell and I'll see you in the next stream.